Sometimes you gotta send a message, yo. Probably you have personal views on, on the war on drugs in general in America. So, so what do you think? Is it a winnable war? Listen, I, I don't think that, you know, drugs themselves are inherently bad. It's how we use them. We'd be better served by having, you know, the government put money up for education um, drug, around drugs and drug usage. I think it's an imbalanced approach. I'm still really contemplating, you know, the whole bit about regulation. Should it be regulated? How much should it be regulated? You know, how should it be regulated? That kind of thing. I like to work more person to person. It's like they're going to do what they do. You know, that's the way the world works. But I'd like to touch people and say, well, how, are you happy with the conditions of your life? And if you're not happy with the conditions of your life, how do you want to affect change in your own life? Because that's the most radical thing that you can actually do, is change your own life. And if you change your life, you know, just, you know, by nature of existence, everything you touch will be changed. There is a fictional social experience uh, featured in the show Amsterdam. Why did it fail and, and could, could it work in reality? You know, sure it can work. I think we, we're, so, we're, we're really afraid here. I mean, it's just such a radical idea, I think, to people to like let other folks do drugs, um, let there be a place where that's okay. I think if you answer the question of what are they afraid of, then you'll know why, why it didn't work. It's because some of someone's fear. I'd have to say just right off the top of my head that it's a fear that this will spread, that the entire city will be a drug-free, like a like drug-free zone, and um, and that our kids, before they're ready to, um, before they have the maturity level to actually experience drugs, might actually touch drugs and not be cognizant of, you know, of a sort of healthy, positive way of experiencing. Intoxicants. Where does this fear coming from in, in American society? What do you say? It's it's the drug addicts that you that that the that the country that the masses see are the ones that are having serious problems. You know, they're the ones that that are just that, that are sitting on the street nodding out all day long or whatever in your neighborhood. If you you know, they see the unproductive users, the users who who have lost their lives to the drug itself. They don't see the users that are productive members of society. And I think that, you know, when you grow up, I mean, I think it's because there's so much drug use and alcoholism, you know, over the last 50 years in this country, you know, the fucking drunk uncle that beats up on the wife, that terrorizes the family, who, you know, he's got a problem. People are afraid of that. They're afraid of their own histories. They're afraid of what they've seen. They're afraid, they're afraid of the worst of it, you know. And it's not an unhealthy fear. Um, but it needs to, it's a fear that needs to be put into perspective. Way down, way down. Playing in the show did change your uh, way of thinking about these things? No. I already, you know, I, I came to this, to this show with my own set of, um, with my own set of issues, my own baggage, you know. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, in a, you know, an underserved community, so to speak. You know, we hadn't, we didn't have crack in the 70s, but we had heroin. Um, and uh, my brother was a drug dealer, and, you know, I eventually, you know, basically worked for him in school, you know, and, and did drugs and, and hung out, you know. You know, I, you know, I did the thing, you know. Um, I, you know, came through, you know, some abusive situations in my life, you know, so, you know, all this shit plays into really, it really plays into how a person uses drugs. Um, cause to me, it's really, for me, that's at the bottom of, of this issue, how you use, why you use, and how is it affecting your life today? Um, and, uh, and so for me, when I came to the show, 
and I saw that part of the storyline was following the lives of these drug dealers, this family of drug dealers and the people they served. Um, it was a topic that was very familiar to me. Um, it didn't seem strange. I knew exactly what was going on. Um, it was hard for me to play a cop. Um, so what I learned as a result of being on the show, really, was um, I learned more about cops than I learned about anything else. Um, my thinking around, my attitude towards cops changed um, greatly as a result of being in the show. Um, I'd already, you know, I was already on the other team <laughs> for quite a bit of my life. You know, I went through some personal things, just like being in the show and being in Baltimore and feeling like, you know, there was a whole sector of the city that was being ignored and not being touched, um, you know, really was painful for me. You know, shooting in a neighborhood that looked kind of like the neighborhood I grew up in um, was very disorienting at times. You know, I had a couple flashbacks, you know, I had my brain kind of just turn off um, a lot during that first season. It was really kind of uh, torturous to some degree. Um, and to feel really powerless, like, what, we can't do anything about this? Like, I, I feel a little guilt, you know, I'm making a lot of money sitting in this project. I know the life that they're living. I'm there, but I'm not living that life. I, ha I lived a part of this, but I'm not living that now. You know, I was like, okay, I need to do some service. I need to do some service, and I've got, like, not just I need to, I gotta do it. If I don't do service, something is, is, is my life means less. Um, and so, I, if anything, being a part of the show brought me back to this hunger to help people, which I'd had all my life. What is your personal mission right, right now? You know, right now my focus is, is Rewire for Change. The organization started out, you know, um, uh, uh, focusing on uh, high-risk young people who've been involved in violent uh, crime and drug crime. Uh, we started by using um, uh, the wire as a teaching tool for those young people, you know, first to help them get um, perspective on their own lives, to introduce the, you know, to them the idea that they, you know, they may want to want, it may be necessary to think a little bit more um, before you make certain decisions, you know. Um, and then from there, just kind of moving moving them through um, understanding the world around them. Because a lot of young people in underserved communities, you know, they don't have a lot of exposure to anything that's outside of their communities. You know, no one's, you know, you know, s school systems don't necessarily do this kind of teaching. You know, families and communities don't necessarily do this kind of teaching. You're teaching people about, you know, um, you know, how your city runs. You know, what are the services that, you know, the city provides for you? Do you know how to access them? Uh, uh, do you know how to, you know, advocate for your rights? Um, you know, and then, uh, and you know, what is it that you, you know, what is your wildest dream f for yourself? Um, did you know that you could have that? And it seems like an insurmountable, you know, it seems like a huge mountain, you know, from where you stand, but it could happen. And the only way it can happen, though, is if we all help each other, make it happen for each other. My big thing right now is the only thing that is transformative in this world is love. The only thing. We're brilliant people, right? We got great minds. People, you know, we, we do all kinds of stuff. But really, love is what transforms. Think I'm going to be the scapegoat for the whole damn machine? But the game is out there, and it's either play or get played. Play, 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 play. What, that it? Gentlemen, ma'am, 